Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here to review the third of the Viltrox autofocus lenses that are coming for a variety of APS-C mirrorless cameras. They, they uh, pioneer on the Fuji X platform, XF mount, which I think will probably be their most popular application, uh, mostly because they provide you know, wide aperture uh, prime lenses at price points that are far less than the equivalent lenses from Fuji. Case in point, in this uh, case, we've got 329 US dollars is the price point for this 56 millimeter f1.4, and uh, Fuji's own 56 millimeter f1.2 is about 830 US dollars. And so, you know, we're talking about a, a huge difference, about a $500 difference in price. And that, of course, is going to be of some consideration particularly when you consider that some lenses like the 56 millimeter f1.2, which I re reviewed here, have a somewhat dated autofocus system and, you know, maybe quite aren't quite up to spec with some of uh, Fuji's more recent de design philosophies. And so uh, this lens joins the uh, 23 millimeter f1.4, 33 millimeter f1.4, and then of course 56 millimeter f1.4. And so what that gives us is correspondence um, when you look at the 1.5 times crop factor of most of the cameras that they're made for. I've reviewed this series so far, two of them on Fuji, one of them on Sony. Both of those having a 1.5 times crop factor. And so uh, 23 millimeters corresponds to the popular 35 millimeter uh, full frame focal length, 33 millimeters with 50 millimeter full frame. And then of course this lens corresponds to an 85 millimeter uh, portrait option. And so all of them obviously extremely useful and any lens with a large maximum aperture and a reasonable price tag and autofocus is going to be interesting. And so in this case, what we have is a, a lens that has a lot going for it, but one significant question mark that I'll get to in a moment. First, however, we're gonna go hands-on. We're gonna take a look at the build, design, specifications, and what you are getting for your money. Let's take a peek. In terms of our design and feature set here, similarly, we've got metal lens mount, we've got the micro USB port for firmware updates, which is great uh, once you learn how to do that. We have got the uh, clickless aperture ring here that'll allow you to go through. There are one third stop detents that are shown along here, but they're not actually detents, they're just markings. And so um, then you have can go into an auto mode where it can be controlled from within the camera. You also have kind of the standard uh, focus ring here, which is nice in metal. The, um, the feel of it, the damping is fairly good. No big complaints there. All metals in the body, it feels like a really, really nicely made lens as has been the case with this whole series. Up front, we see that we have got a 52 millimeter front filter thread, and that again is in metal, the filter uh, threads, and then you can focus down to a minimum of 0.6 millimeters or 60 centimeters, right under two feet. And so at that focus distance, you have a, eh, pretty pedestrian 0.1 times magnification. That is just marginally better than the, the Fuji 56 millimeter F1.2. Not as good as what the Sigma 56 millimeter, if you're you know comparing this lens say on Sony, it's not quite as good as what the Sigma lens is. Now on that, that note, let's, let's pause and, and talk about price because the uh, Viltrox is the cheapest of the three lenses at $329. Then the Sigma is $449. If you're on Sony, I think that the Sigma is probably worth the extra money. It's a little bit more reliable and focus operation. You lose out on the uh, aperture ring, but what you do gain, and I think the Viltrox is slightly better made, but I also think that the Sigma is the better lens optically. And so anyway, um, you know, maybe a a little bit more of a harder value sell there, even though this lens is $120 cheaper. But when you're comparing on Fuji, which I'm doing the review on Fuji, that's where things get, you know, maybe a little bit more complicated for Fuji, Fuji shooters because the Fuji, Fuji non 56 millimeter F1.2, so it's one third stop faster maximum aperture, but it weighs in at 849 US dollars compared to 329. That's a huge, huge difference. And so I think that that's where this lens becomes more compelling.
Now, in terms of the basic specifications, this lens weighs 290 grams, which is 10 grams heavier than the Sigma. However, it's considerably lighter than the 405 grams of the Fuji lens. And uh, physical dimensions, it is 72 millimeters in length, and so it's just a little bit longer than the Fuji lens, which is 70 millimeters. In terms of the diameter, it's a little bit narrower. It is uh, 65 millimeters in diameter compared to 73.2 millimeters on the uh, Fuji lens. And so the Fuji lens is a little bit more squat, you know, uh, rounder and shorter. This lens is a little bit longer and slimmer. The uh, Viltrox does give you nine aperture blades compared to seven aperture blades for the uh, Fuji lens. But one place where uh, Viltrox has not proven to be really that good in lens design thus far is in the actual um, shape of their aperture, which really is not very round. And as you can see from this picture, you end up with a somewhat misshapen aperture shape when you really stop things down, which can show up in uh, some highlights if you happen to be in a situation where you still have some out of focus highlights. So uh, not a, a strength for them. There are 10 elements and nine groups in this particular lens. And of course, you know, you end up with a roughly 85 millimeter um, angle of view after you apply the crop factor. So this is a prime, um, you know, kind of medium telephoto portrait type lens. And so anyway, uh, so physically a lot of good things going on here. And we'll uh, break down some of the other attributes as we examine autofocus and image quality. So of course, overall, uh, a lot of good things there. The lens uh, has a very nice degree of build, as have all of these lenses. I love the fact that they do have the uh, USB port for updating them. Uh, you know, first uh, Sigma, then Tamron, and then uh, Samyang, they all kind of took the option of uh, having their proprietary, you know, USB dock that you could do firmware updates through. I, that's that's created some unnecessary complication in many cases and to be able to just run that firmware update right through the lens itself I think is a hugely smart idea and Viltrox has continued to update that firmware and so I think that that's a very positive. In this case, I actually feel like this lens is due a firmware update or two because the autofocus, while um, autofocus has good speed, it's reasonably quiet, it's better actually in both of those metrics than what um, Fuji's own 56mm f1.2 is. But what I'm finding is that at least on the X-T200, which admittedly doesn't have as robust an autofocus as what I've been kind of spoiled with between the X-T3, X-T4, and even X-T30. In this case, I feel like it's not as sophisticated. Byproduct, however, is that there is more just kind of focus um, hunting and misses than what I'm accustomed to. And when I tried to do my standard focus pull test, well, Let's just say the results are scary. Let's take a look. And so, yeah, uh, th that, that's somewhat frightening there, uh, just the total lack of consistency and so much pulsing and hunting. And so I don't know, again, frankly, whether it has to do with the autofocus system for video work and the X-T200. Uh, you know, that, that is a deviation from the norm for me, but it's the body that I have from Fuji right now. And they're the ones that supply me loaners. And so I kind of fit in these um, reviews when I'm reviewing one of their camera bodies. And so I don't know if it's that or the lens itself. Um, maybe some of you that own the lens can chime in with your own personal feedback. But I would say at the very least, there does need to be some firmware update for X-T200 uh, owners to make sure that we're getting better performance than that for video work. For uh, stills uh, work, I found that, you know, there were moments when focus, you know, either hunted or missed. Most of the time I could, you know, you, you were aware of it and so you could try to refocus again and you would, when, when things did focus, I got accurate results. IAF seemed to work fine and for these portrait shots, they're all pretty consistently focused on the eye and, and so I didn't have a major problem with that. 
uh, I just found more focus hunting than what I have, uh, I'm accustomed to seeing even than what I saw with the 33 millimeter uh, f1.4. And so I do want to highlight that. And again, I did, I focused, I reviewed the 33 millimeter f1.4 on the X-T4, a much more robust camera than this. So your mileage may vary. So let's take a look at the image quality performance because there's actually a lot of positive to uh, go to on that front. Let's take a peek. So first of all, we can see we've got a little bit of uh, pincushion distortion at work here. Surprisingly little amount of vignette for a compact f1.4 lens. So correction, pretty straightforward. I plugged in a minus five to correct for the distortion. And then I added a plus 23, so you know a fairly small amount. And then I just slid the midpoint over to give a nice even linear slide towards the middle of the frame. I would say that's a pretty great looking end result. So as far as distortion and vignette, I would say both uh, positive marks here. Now before we get uh, super critical here, I did do these tests on a Fuji X-T200, so it's a 24 megapixel sensor. And so at just a pixel level, we're not too critical. So we can see a, a pretty good amount of um, middle of the frame sharpness, contrast not too bad. Uh, mid frame still looks fairly good. And towards the edge, we can see some softening that has taken place. So if we jump in a little bit more critically to a, a 200% magnification, uh, what we're going to see is that stopping down to f2 does improve contrast a bit. We can see that there is some haze on the textures that has been lifted and so improved contrast, better looking resolution. Um, everything looks just a little bit sharper here. Looking at the mid frame, we can see that whereas things were softer, a little bit hazier, they're starting to improve in terms of contrast and thus the uh, rendering of our details. Um, looking down here, we can see that, you know, left corner looks much improved compared to the, you know, the F1.4 and improved in the right corner, but we can see we're still heading into some softening as we go towards the edge of the frame. We better contrast and obviously better resolution, but still some ways to go here at the edge. F2.8 does show further improvement, though we're not exactly pen sharp here yet in the corner. At the mid frame, things are looking better still, just continuing improved contrast and you can see more and more resolution. Stopping down from f2.8 to f4, finally starts to show a good looking results in the corner, stepping on down to f5.6. And we can see that now our corner results are very, very crisp. And so if you're wanting to shoot at landscape apertures, uh, somewhere around f5.6 is going to be a sweet spot. Here's an even better example because we've got a fairly flat plane of focus at infinity. And what we can find is really nice detail in the center of the frame. And then as we pan towards the left, this is at f5.6, there's really very little drop off towards the edge of the frame. And if we go the opposite direction, you can see there's actually a nice acuity, nice rendering of fine details. And so as far as the sharpness profile, this lens has the potential to get quite sharp when stopped down a bit and both good center and mid frame uh, sharpness at wide apertures. Now at f16, which is uh, minimum focus distance, we actually have a better result um, on this, you know, not overly high resolution body. We actually have a better result at f16, a little bit of resolution, better contrast. And so um, certainly it's possible to shoot this at small apertures. And, um, you know, the center, it's, it suffers a little bit compared to f1.4, but we could see as far as the evenness across the frame. At f16, you're still getting a usable result. Now, uh, maximum magnification is not particularly impressive. However, what we can see is here at minimum focus distance, uh, I actually like the result. Good contrast, good detail there. Um, I'm actually quite impressed that this lens does as well as it does near minimum focus. And so uh, certainly a positive there. Now, if we take a peek at chromatic aberrations, what we find is, as far as longitudinal chromatic aberrations go, contrast is actually fairly decent here, but you can see there is both some purple and then some green fringing, purple before and green after the primary plane of focus. So in real world applications, I see less of the purple fringing and more of the green fringing along uh, out of focus areas and particular out of focus highlights. I think that'll be the primary place where you kind of have to deal with this. 
This shot is only at f2.8, and yet you can see at the plane of focus area, really, really nice crisp results, um, very nice contrast. And, and so this certainly is a lens that has a lot of cap capability for sharpness. This particular image I thought showed off a nice color and if you zoom in, nice rendering of the details and a landscape type shot. And so I think that the lens again is incapable of nice impressive results. Here at f2 we can see that the bokeh looks nice. We can also see that there's a nice sharpness on the plane of focus and in these areas of high contrast, no real bleeding. We do see a little bit of fringing however in the out of focus bright areas. Now here's a result that shows both some foreground and some background bokeh. F1.4, beautiful color, and as you can see, the center of the frame uh, being our kind of plane of focus here, you can also see that we have really, really nice sharpness and contrast without uh, a lot of bleeding along the edge of the leaf. And so uh, a nice performance there, tiny bit of purple fringing here, but overall I think that the image itself is very uh, visually pleasing. So all that combines to be a nice uh, budget portrait lens. And so here you can see that the overall uh, frame looks really, really nice. Uh, bokeh is nice and pleasing. And uh, we can see looking at the subject that while its sharpness isn't necessarily off the page, it looks good. And um, skin tones look nice here. Overall, we have a nice result. Stop down to f2 and um, you know I've gone for a little bit more contrast punch here, but you can see that the uh, detail is actually really, really nice and crisp, uh, good contrast around the eyes, and similarly the um, whole scene looks uh, nice and pleasing. And so I would definitely say that there is better contrast and sharpness at uh, f1.4 here than what the more expensive Fuji lens offers up. That being said, if you're a Sony shooter, I, the uh, Sigma is uh, 56 millimeter f1.4 is fantastically sharp, has great autofocus. It would be my choice as a Sony shooter. On Fuji, however, I, you know it, it's a little bit more of a, a weighted decision. I think that the bokeh is really nice from this lens. Uh, optically, I would probably favor it. I just feel like it has more going for it. Uh, particularly when you consider the price point, but I would like to have a little bit more confidence in that autofocus. That being said, I wasn't all that impressed with the autofocus on the Fuji version as well. And so um, my experience has been is that Viltrox has been thorough in addressing uh, focus concerns. I believe that they'll do that here. And I think if you have the more robust focusing uh, bodies, you'll probably get more robust focusing results than what I saw. But I do always want to highlight what I see when I do reviews and so that you can make an informed decision. And so if you want more information, you can check out the description down below. I do have linkage to an image gallery and quick uh, review there. And so if you can check that out. Do check out the image gallery. Lots of nice photos that I, I took, was able to take with this lens. It is a nice lens optically and I like images that come out of it. There's also buying links there if you'd like to purchase one for yourself. And beyond that, of course, there's linkage to follow me on social media, to become a patron, to sign up for my newsletter. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.